thank you everybody for taking the time to come and to the webinar. Um, let's get started. Um, I want to talk about this is a this is an important important aspect of um, communicating with the developer uh, community, your maintainers, your um, other developers by explaining what a patch does. So. Um, couple of uh, questions. I'll start kick off with a couple of questions. Let's do a, a little experiment here. Um, did you ever think, I wish the commit log describes the change clearly? So raise your hand. We'll, we'll just do a, a quick little poll before we get started. Let's give it a little bit of a time to um, do this poll and see. Kristen, do we have any count? <laughs> Kristen, on that? We have two people that have raised their hands. Okay. Oh, there's a third. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, now up to four. Anybody else? Okay. Looks okay, like we'll move on to the next question. There you go. Um, uh, so, uh, how many people wish that uh, the commit log includes a little bit of a background in information, uh, either to do a better review or be able to maintain it in the long run, or even learn? For example, you're look, uh, you are uh, somebody is learn, looking at a new subsystem or a new area to learn. How many of you uh, think it it would be helpful to have more background information? Another little poll here. <laughs> All right. We have six, now seven, eight, almost, yeah, eight people, Shua. Okay. <laughs> okay. Eight people out of how many attendees? Out of 18. Okay. That, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, so how many of you thought, oh, I wish I wrote a better uh, commit log uh, if I'm... Uh, you know, you're looking at it after six months or two years and you're going, okay, what did I write? So how many of you thought you, you wrote a better commit log to maintain your own code? All right. We have seven people. That's good, great. So the last question, I struggle with this one. Um, I actually find problems when I um, um, starting to describe my patches. Um, so how many people think, did you ever find problems um, while you are writing a commit log and go, hmm, I could do this better um, I, and change the patch? We, I'll find a bug. <laughs> we have seven people out of 19 now, Shua. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, okay, that's good. That's good. So, uh, so. Um, that is really, the, all of these questions are in my head when I was put, talking about putting this presentation together and then I keep thinking about it. So we're on the right track, I think. At least 50% of, of us think that, that way. Okay, let's jump in now. Um, and so um, the, the commit log, um, so these are hitting on the same themes, right? So a commit log, um, why do we even, why, why do we, uh, commit, commit log is needed in the first place? The reason is that we want to, it, it, like I said, you know, uh, the last question you just answered, sometimes you do find problems as you are describing your change. So that means that it, uh, that step acts as a self review before you send your code out to, to for review by others. Um, and then for reviewers, like in anybody reviewing the code, it gives them a context about the change, um, uh, sp uh, more specifically what, why, and how, right? Um, and it, the, another thing that I, don't, I think that we sometimes don't think about is it's a permanent record. It serves as a document that gets added to the code base. Essentially, it goes with the code change and then the uh, description of what changed goes in there. And then for maintainers and developers, um, it becomes easier to maintain, especially you are looking at um, debugging a problem in, a, in an area and you're looking at, uh, so how uh, does this 
what happened? Why did this change get made? And what is the reason for this change? Understanding that helps um, fixing a problem or adding new feature or new enhancement, understanding that. So it makes it easier in the long run to maintain. A well understood change can be maintained better. Uh, for a new developers, this is kind of the mentoring aspect of um, uh, or teaching aspect of it, that if you have a good documentation that goes with the code change, then uh, somebody new coming in can understand it better. They can use um, that as a tool to learn um, the evolution of a subsystem or a feature um, and then um, and, and generally learning the code, uh, code the, the commits that went into that subsystem are, are a piece of code, right? Um, so what's in it for all of us, uh, for you and everybody? It's easier to get your page patch accepted because what happens is if you were to write, that is the first connection for, for a lot of us, we are making that first connection uh, if you are a new developer or if you are playing in a new subsystem, that's the first connection you're making with that community of developers. And then um, at that point, uh, explaining what you're doing is uh, makes it easier um, to for your patch get, uh, getting accepted. And then also in the long run, uh, maintain it. And like we said, it's also a good learning tool. Hey, Shua, I uh -huh. think we have a question okay. um, from um, I'm sorry to mis mispronounce the name here, but Iwa Winman, you have your hand raised. Okay, go ahead. No, I didn't have a question. I just had a procedural thing with my password, so that's nothing. Okay, no problem okay. at all. Thanks, Iwa. Okay, no problem. Um, okay, let's go ahead. Um, so there are some uh, things that we follow when we write code. Um, uh, commit logs. So a few things. Um, the, it's all uh, you are. Uh, you use the language. It's it's an imperative sentences. It's uh, that you're. Re it reads like a request. Um, it, it, it's a grammatical term. Imperative sentences seems like it's, you're asking, uh, requesting a change to the code base. Uh, so you would say add X Y Z feature, uh, fix X Y Z bug. Um, and then you would write a concise subject. There's two parts to it, right? It's, uh, commit logs. You have the subject short summary and followed by a description. Write a uh, short, concise subject line um, that doesn't, these subject lines don't end with a period. Uh, and you spell check, of course. Um, uh, and then describe what is being fixed, changed, added, and why not, uh, and how is, this is what and why, right? And then how is, if you do think that that adds value to understand the change. It's not like, um, not a description of the code itself. You are talking about more the design aspect and how the change fits into the rest of the um, code in uh, rest of the uh, code in there. So that's what you're talking about. And then include any supporting information. Like for example, you ran a, uh, you found a compiler warning. So you want to, as you're compiling, it, a compiler found a warning. So you, you include that compiler warning and then you describe how it's being fixed. Same thing with all the other things, parse, match, patch check, um, panic messages and so on. So any supporting information um, and say explain if you have uh, any information you think that's valuable, the, some of these sparse and even compiled one, warnings tends to be very cryptic. So if you figured out uh, a why, um, the, why th this, whether the compiler warning is valid itself and any background information that you can provide, that'll be very valuable for others. If applicable, add commit tag. We do that in the Linux kernel for sure. We, we have a fixes tag that references the commit you're fixing. So what that does is that helps you go back and look at that commit and say, okay, this is the right fix for that uh, particular, uh, the problem that particular commit has or, um, or introduced or maybe included in the, in the first place. So my reference is, I gave you my reference to this. I refer, refer to this um, uh, when I'm looking at, um, I have learned from this uh, resource. 
um, take a look at this resource. Um, this resource is a great resource for uh, explains all of the things. Comment log. So now, any questions before I I'm going to go going to switch, uh, switch gears here, going to the mode of actual analysis um, of some of the comments. We'll look at I just looked at a few comments. Uh, I picked some a few comments at random uh, from the recent comments from the kernel. And so uh, we can uh, look at them and see uh, how some of them, how we can improve, what we can learn from them, how, um, what are the elements in each of those um, commits, logs actually. Now we're not looking at code, we're just looking at the logs. Um, so any questions before that? Yeah, looks like we have a question, Shua. Go ahead, Nander. You can. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm not just speaking. Yeah, uh, one of the questions which I have related to uh, commit logs or messages uh, is that we find some, sometimes problematic if the commit logs become uh, too long, let's say. I mean, uh, uh, I had some discussions around with some, some other developers and uh, some other developers sustain the idea that you know you can put there in the commit messages whatever it doesn't matter it's better to be uh, more than less <laughs> that's true but my my view is that it's better to be exactly what it needs to be not more not not less uh, because sometimes i guess people when they open a commit uh, message uh, and there is a long message they usually uh, try to skip reading all of it. Thank you. So that is correct. I struggle with that as well. So how long is too long? I don't have an answer for that. Um, clear answer. It depends on the commit, right? So sometimes you have a panic uh, information that you want to include. It is going to be long, right? Because um, um, so uh, uh, I wouldn't, I, so what I would say is if you're adding valuable information to it, it not, more is not, um, it, being concise is important, right? That's what we say, not just subject lines. Uh, we're, I, I didn't add that, but subject, not just subject, subject lines, even the commit log itself need to be concise to convey everything. So that's the first thing. You are absolutely right. If it's very long, um, I don't know what is very really long, uh, how, how to set that limit, but uh, uh, if it's very really long, yes, people will ignore it. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, uh, more uh, like I, I'm referring exactly to not valuable necessarily information, but uh, yes, that's, uh, I just wanted to see what other opinions are about this, thank you. And Shua, we've, we've got a question in the chat, if you could, um, post the Git links in the chat, or I can go ahead and do that. Um, let's see. So for this, uh, for the um, reference I put, put in, or just the comments? Um, let's see here. I think the reference link that you have on that slide is what people are looking for. Okay. Thank you, Megan. Thanks, Shua. Okay, let me find the chat window. <laughs> um, is it? Yes, I, I found it. You got it. Okay. Yes. There you go. We got it. Thank you so much. And okay, so any other questions before we switch into um, to the next one? Nope. Looks like we're good. Okay. So um, they, let's look at this comment. I, I'm going to um, post the link in the window. And let me know if you could all pull it up. This is, this is a comment, that uh, recent comment I looked at. And it is to, to the, just the conversation we had a little, little while ago about how long is too long comment. It is a long comment. Uh, however, um, I think that this commit log talks a lot about, starts with describing this lock. Um, it is fixing a deadlock uh, between write back and truncate. And so it's talking about this, the, the giving background information about this log 
and then it talks about what it current state is and if you scroll down yes they, it, it gives you lots of information here um, and then it talks about fix this by this section here talks about why um, it is uh, how why this is being fixed this way so two aspects to this i'm going to switch back here um, it describes how the lock works and what it does so uh, for that, it, it helps the current reviewers, maintainers, and new developers as well. It, it, in that aspect, it's uh, um, helping the maintenance angle, and then also review angle, and then as well as for anybody new developers learn, wanting to learn, it does. It gives you enough background information. So it also tells you what is wrong with the current code and how it fails. If you looked at this example here, um, it talks about the failure mode of this because it's giving you um, with the examples from the command line examples on how it's failing. And it includes the fix details. We looked at it. It's a, yeah, and then, and it gives a out, command output examples for reviewers to go play with and see how reviewers and maintainers as well as new developers for if you're there learning this new area, they can go and say, oh, okay, I can compare this uh, output with this and then how it's being fixed. So I thought this is a, um, this um, is, uh, this commit log has all of the elements we want um, in helpful commit log. Any comments on this? Let's, let's uh, open it up for comments on, uh, on what your impressions of this commit log is. If you'd like to jump in, you can go ahead and unmute your microphone. Feel free to just jump in with your comments. And if you want to um, uh, play with this, uh, can you, uh, Kristen, do you have, can you post the Jamboard link as well? Yes. I, um, let's see. It's the first link in the chat actually, but I will, I'm gonna go ahead and do that again, just for anybody new here. Um, okay, there so we just go. Just add a sticky note and then uh, put your comment there and we'll, um, on this commit. So we're going to use Jamboard for a, an, from, uh, for the next analysis. Perfect. So I'm going to highlight, this is the sticky note right here. You can just click on that and, you know, play with colors. Mm -hmm. Or you can ask chat questions in the chat or just speak. Perfect. All right. So I will wait just a moment before I switch to the next one. If you want to share any thoughts on this particular commit. Commit log, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> well, my opinion is that it's very well written from the point of view that it says the problem and uh, why it was fixed like that. Great. Yeah, that's that's my impression as well. Yeah, um, and uh, because I guess everybody can see what you are doing in the you know commit, but the commit message, I mean, it should explain why you choose this option and not uh, any other options and things like that, and what was the problem? Because it's not necessarily from your changes, code changes, that you know what was the problem. Right. And, uh, Great. Yeah, that's exactly, that's what I thought too. So that, that, that does describe very well. Any other thoughts? No. Nope. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to the next one. Um, so let me first give you the link in the chat. Um, and then I will go there as well. So this is um, this is a comment that addressed a uh, sparse a message. Um, the the one thing that when I was looking at this comment, one thing that jumped out at me is uh, sparse messages themselves are somewhat cryptic at times. Um, so this comment explains why 
um, the spa, sparse, the, the, why sparse is complaining about it and goes into a little more details than just giving the sparse message, the, the actual warning and just say, hey, I'm fixing this warning. Um, that's one thing I, I really liked about this commit log that it is going um, uh, one more step off. It would have been enough to just give the warning and then here is the fix. It's going into a little more detail on why um, sparse is complaining about it in the first place. So you can apply that, somebody looking at that can apply that as they are looking at their code and say, hey, oh, okay, um, this might be helpful if when I'm writing my own code. So in that aspect, I thought this is a, this added value, in, added more instead of just giving just the sparse message. So let's talk about this. Um, you can use the Jamboard uh, to uh, talk about what, how, what you think of this um, or, or speak or chat. Oh, somebody is saying they can't see the. Um... Oh, um, let's see here. I think I can go ahead and. There is no chat. Here's the um the link that Shua was referencing. There we go. We're all set, Shua. Okay, great. Yep. Great. So any thoughts on this one? Um, is my analysis, can you add any, uh, would you like to add uh, your thoughts on um, my analysis on this or my thoughts on this? Jamboard, let's play with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm looking to see some colors on the Jamboard. Yes. All right, I'm guessing there are no other thoughts. So I will move to um, the next comment. Um, I'm opening this up and then I'm also going to put the link in the chat window. All right. So let's look at this one. Um, this is a tree-wide change, actually, removing uh, KZ3 compatibility definition. So when um, the, this commit explains what happened here, when, when uh, a tree-wide change, this commit, the first commit, this commit right here made a tree-wide change and then we left um, compa uh, backward compatibility, we do that, um, that's for backward compatibility. So, uh, however, uh, more instances of um, KZ3 is popping up. So, hey, let's go ahead and remove it so we don't have to keep um, doing that. So, uh, this, is, this gives lots of information. First, it tells you which commit is the one where we changed this uh, added, uh, we made this change, TY change, and then um, and then how, how that's the leaving that, uh, definition, compatibility definition, definition in there is needing us to go keep maintaining this over and over again and getting rid of it. What is the benefit of it? So I, um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it has lots of information. And then if I wanted to go look at, uh, I'm looking at, oh yeah, 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 that happened. So let me go look at this tree wide change and what are all the subsystems because it's going to tell us, um, every single instance of, uh, uh change that was made and how wide the change has been. This is, this is going to be very useful information in here. So comments um, on this um, and then uh, anything you can, you want to add to, to what I said? Well, again, <laughs> uh, the funny thing is that your, your examples are signed by Linus Torvalds, so it's very, it's very hard to find a bad one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> so they are, <laughs> <laughs> they are, they are, uh, I, okay, so I will, I will, we'll go into the ones that probably can be improved in a little bit. <laughs> like I'm it. starting off with positive news, you know. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, we'll look at it. Well, that's a, that's a really strong hint that they're written well, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, um, all right, so let's look at, I'm going to um, switch gears here. Let's, let's look at this probably uh, is a good one that could generate. Um, 
Let's look at this one. Um, so share your thoughts with me on this. When you read that, what does it tell you? Um, either a comment or you can use the Jamboard. Oh, there is something in the Jamboard. Somebody did. Oh, it's just me, Shua. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so my desire to see some colors. Thanks, Megan. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> So, okay, so I will share my thoughts on this. Um, I, um, if nobody else has questions, uh, just I, I, can, I can comment if you want. Okay, cool. Uh, a commit says add USB IDs, and I see it in the GIF. But why does commit actually exist? Why do you have to add these IDs? Exactly. Oh. That's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. So um, this is very um, use. I mean, maintainer knows what maintainers know what this exactly means, and uh, 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 the com commit log. Uh, somebody that wrote the commit log knows exactly what they're doing. Um, this is it. Really doesn't need anything else from the review. Somebody that knows the subsystem. The one thing though, it does not tell you what that means to somebody that is trying to figure out what's happening, you're absolutely right, it doesn't tell you more. That it would be nice to, even to just say, probably a little bit, add a little bit more saying, um, what it's doing is that it's adding support for this card, right? So uh, we can figure that out, but um, if you know the subsystem and if you look at the code, you can see that it's adding um, uh, that particular card support to this driver, but it would be nice to summarize that. Well, would be this, helpful this is actually a... Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So sorry, I just want to. Answer. This is actually a good example of uh, <laughs> uh, at which level you write the information in this commit message. Because okay, uh, this basically only adds support for a different uh, USB card, and it's exactly like you said. You know, the people that they are needing, let's put it this way, this information knows they do know how to read it, and. Uh, if you put more information here, like, uh, um, you know, a card to be recognized by the USB subsystems needs to be able to have this information about the IDs. Therefore, we add the USB IDs for the ceiling MPL 200 card. So, you know, if you say like that, some people may see, let's say, well, what I said is it's not very long. Uh, it does explain, let's say, why those IDs are needed there. Uh, but then again, for people which are actually using this and modify this, they know exactly what this is. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, some some uh, it, it, the question might come up. Well, you're, why are you stating the obvious, right? So that's kind of what. Yeah. Yeah. Know. Exactly. Yes. So yes. that's why I kind of picked this comment because I thought that. Um, we that's what the audience for this information is uh, um, reviewers that know the subsystem well um, maintainers that know sub subsystem well and understand the underlying code and we also have to worry about um, new developers or new p uh, new people new um, uh, and then l let's not forget the user community itself so a user is going and looking at this, um, saying, hey, does this particular release support this, my card, right? So I, I, it doesn't have to give a lots of information. It, it probably, it, it could be probably um, an, uh, enhanced a teeny bit by saying, add um, support instead of USB IDs, it could just say support maybe. That's my thought. I thought, how can you communicate without adding too much? N not sounding obvious. And then also, um, it's a kind of a thought exercise for us to figure out. You're absolutely right. This is, um, um, in this case, if you wrote three paragraphs, right, that could just turn off reviewers and maintainers. Oh. Looks like we have another question here, Shua. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Go ahead. Um, there is, um, I have a chat here, but I'm not seeing the question. Where is the call? Uh -huh. Let's see. Um, they have their hand raised. It's Agile. Uh, yeah. So uh, actually, I just want to know whether we really care about the standard while we are committing. For example, USB, when we are seeing here, uh, it's in a small letters, even in the comments or, or the description level. But usually as a standard, we use in caps. So th that kind of details, whether we look it to while we committing or it's just only the ideas which care about. Um, so yes, you can, uh, so you're saying you can, yeah, this is a small change really. So that's why you are seeing the whole thing. But if you run, um, so I don't know if I follow your question, I'm sorry. Could you? Uh, uh, could okay, you? I'll, I'll be reframing it. For example, uh, in a standard, if, if you are talking about USB, we will be put everything in caps, like universal serial bus is not in the small letters. So if you see the commit and add USB IDs, if you specifically see it's in a small letter. So that kind of level, whether we really care in the kernel commits or like it's just only the idea whether it is always communicated. Uh, it, does that make sense or should I explain it in detail? Uh, I don't know if I... I, I, am, uh, I understood the question okay. uh, in a way. So, I mean, of course, when we write uh, the commit message is it's very good to write the correct way the acronyms and everything uh, uh, that represents something so grammatically correct and things like that because uh, so in this situation USB uh, it will be advisable to be in caps in my opinion as well oh, I see. Uh, but that's not necessarily you know a and, and I guess that's uh, from case to case, uh, acceptable by some maintainers or somebody else will comment that you should change it and so on. Uh, but I guess, you know, the main point here is to make yourself understandable and then to use grammatically and uh, from the acronymics point of view correctly, the message. Right. Yeah, that, that's true. Did that answer your question? Um, earlier question is that? Uh, uh, yes, I, I actually I just want to know what is the stand on like if so for example some contributors given something like this whether it will be reject bag or something saying that you have to use the correct acronyms or something like that or no um, no so so the, the maintainer or review, some reviewers might suggest um, changes to the commit log and say hey uh, can you explain it better but I, I don't think the commit itself would be rejected just based on the commit log no that doesn't happen uh, in uh, it's commit logs also get reviewed in some sense because uh, um, if uh, you if a reviewer or maintainer they don't understand the uh, commit uh, there seem to be so a few things to look for right as uh, if you're reviewing or you're a maintainer or a just reviewer you have to see if the commit log um, is talking about the change that's actually being made so there if there is a disconnect between the commit log and then the change itself then then that would be you would ask for a change right so did you really intend to make this change or your commit log and change don't seem to go together um, that's one thing um, and then this commit log there is nothing absolutely wrong with this commit log I mean this is a good commit log it, it is depends on whether it's giving information to all parties involved so that's that's where I would say maybe a little bit more helpful saying it adding it is adding support for this card um, would would have been a probably communicated better to a new developer or a new somebody user looking at do I have support for my card so uh, to to answer your question writing a bad commit log um, doesn't mean that no, but commits don't get rejected for uh, for writing a um, based on the commit log put it this way code is what we look at right so it's just that you, you want to look at your code explaining the change you're making will be helpful for reviewers. Uh, okay. Any other that, thoughts I, on that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 
And Shua, it looks like you just have a, a few chats, um, comments in the chat. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I'm seeing that. Okay. Yes. In my opinion, nothing is wrong with this. You need a commit message anyways, and this one is short enough that it's quite concise without being ridiculously concise. Yes, absolutely. This, there is nothing really um, wrong with this commit log. Um, it, it, this is an example of a commit log, how it speaks to different audiences. So that's one of the reasons I picked that, this commit log, because it makes perfect sense to, we talked about this, I think, that reviewers and maintainers involved. However, it might not uh, give you give enough information somebody new that's looking at this or a user looking at this commit log to see if they have support, this driver supports their code. Perfect. And one more chat, it looks like, um, one more comment in the chat for you, Shua. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, all right. This commit message seems to imply that just adding these IDs is enough to support the new code. No more code had to be written for that. Yes, that is true. That's what it's saying. Yeah. So from the angle of somebody go, um, somebody, um, yes, it is telling you just adding the USB ID itself is enough to add support for this code. That's what it's saying. It's not spelling it out clearly, but that's what it's saying. Any more thoughts on this? No, I think we're good. Okay. And um, let me see one more. Okay, let's look at this one. Um, share thoughts on this one. Also, um, think about it from all different angles of how many, oh, who will look, who, when this patch comes in, right? Um, it's in the, com it, it's committed now into the base, but when you are looking at this commit and you're looking at trying to figure out what changes went in, um, what, how can you improve this if, if it needs improvement? No, no questions, you no uh, questions. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I can say my opinion. Okay. Sure. It's okay. Yeah. So, uh, uh, to me also this one says some things, but uh, uh, the only thing which, in my opinion, could, could be improved is that, you know, why do we need multiple ABMs or support for multiple ABMs and in which case those are needed. Uh, of course, again, uh, this might be perfectly okay for the people that understand the subsystem, uh, but uh, not okay for other people which they don't understand what is this. Absolutely. I think that, that that's, and then I have a um, comment from in the chat saying it's missing the how, and you're right. So that's what you're saying, that it's missing how and uh, background information. So yes, there is, um, this is perfectly uh, good if you understand the context. Um, however, for somebody new or somebody that uh, isn't as familiar with this, uh, um, uh, what ABM is or in a particular feature on how it's implemented, it'll be um, for them, um, understanding commits will take longer. There is not in, they will have a little more lead time in trying to understand what she, what what this change does or what happens. Any other comments? No, nope. looks like we're good. All right, so let me see how I'm parsing through and let's see which ones. And let's look at this one. Um, and then let me give you the com uh, link to it. Sorry about that. 
Um, and after this, I'll open up for, let's open up for um, open discussion so we can share thoughts, not specific to comics. So yeah, just go ahead and give it a read and then um, post comments um, in Jamboard or chat. Any thoughts on this one? Well, he says the problem, though, that doesn't say how he does fix this. Right, that's right, yeah. So it talks about the problem itself and um, return values and then why, what happens because it identifies the problem. It, it's telling us what it's doing. Which, so one thing I thought was maybe it would be helpful to um, helpful to say, um, it explains what and how, and I'm not clear on, I would say, uh, what, what would be, what is, how it changes the behavior in terms of, what is the correct return value in this case, or what would happen? What, uh, it's a little more background might have been helpful, but this, this is a good, this, explains a lot of things here. It does talk about, and then it also talk, gives you information on um, the commit it's fixing as well. So in all respects, it's good. Any other thoughts on this? This is, uh, seems to be a common line utility and it would help to describe what user would experience if it continues to misbehave until this fix arrived. Ah, yes, that is a good point. That is absolutely a good point, yes. Um, Shua, it looks like there's an additional comment in the chat for you. Right. It is good to see the additional link in the commit for more detailed explanation that might not include in the commit due to the size. Ah, yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah, thanks. Thanks for jogging my memory on that link. So there, it, there, it does have a link to the um, discussion um, that happened. And then also it, it, uh, it would be good to see probably a, a link to a bug if a bug was reported. Um, on this uh, particular problem that would give us more context around uh, what is fixed. So uh, some um, commit logs do include bug reports, so which would be helpful having that. Did that, is that, um, is that, I think that's the question. Did I answer that question? Did you get your answer? Um, I, did? Is that I think that's your, your comment there where you all sat. Okay, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Um, just ask the question or type again. Oh, looks like he just said it was a comment. So looks like oh, okay. he's good. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So you're good. Okay, good. We're good. Good. Okay, so um, there is um, one more. How are we doing on time, uh, Kristen? Uh, time check? Yeah, um, we have about 45 minutes left. Yes. So let's look at um, this one right here. Um, uh, this this one, this comment here. Uh, we can take a look at this one and then see share your thoughts on this one. 
Um, do you want to share the link? Oh, so sorry. Thank you. No, don't worry. <laughs> Thanks for prompting. Of course, no worries. Okay. All right. There you go. Thank you. So that's on this one. Okay, my my opinion, you know, I mean, it will be very good to explain uh, why this is not allowed and to have background information, why this is a problem in the first place. And then uh, also to me, it will be important to understand why if we fetch it earlier, fixes the problem. Uh, so, we don't have background information to decide why this fix is, is good enough already. Um, at least what, what I'm seeing. Yes, here. yeah. I'm typing your uh, question, uh, answer in the sticky notes. Okay. <laughs> so another thing I thought, um, it, uh, when another observation I made when I was looking at it is I don't see the, it would be helpful to probably see um, the, uh, the, the error itself. So that, that would have been helpful as well to see the raw log, the use after free that is fixing, um, use after free uh, message, warn. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, include, hmm? The nature of use of the free uh, prevents seeing any uh, good error or anything that could go wrong after you access memory, which probably used uh, uh, somewhere else. So for me, this message seems fine. It fixes some. Uh, it's very simple fix, uh, uh, to, which avoids very complex uh, effects if it's not fixed. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so um, right. It it uh, da, it it would be probably helpful to see the stack trace. So, um, and an actual message itself. But um, yes, um, this is a. Um, not all of them include that information. Um, and a link to it might be helpful as well. Just a link to um, to the bug reporting in this particular case for background information, right? All right, so um, I have, um, I want to open this up for discussion um, on, um, we have time for an open discussion if you want to share your thoughts. Well, I, I've seen a lot of, uh, in Linux kernel, you, you will have hard time to find a bad commit message. But uh, in my experience, in other companies, I've seen a lot of bad messages like fix bug, what bug, uh, that does it really fix it. And fix build, for example, which build was failing. And, uh, it probably would help if you uh, showed some bad uh, commits, but it will be hard to find. And I can only uh, think of a proprietary software, which I cannot share in this chat. Okay. Yeah, um, so yes, it is hard to find. Um, so it, it's, it's hard to find a bad commit, of course, in the, in the kernel. 
what we are really looking for is, um, I am looking more at the angle of, um, does, it, uh, does it meet all of the needs of all of the people, right? So in some cases, the commit uh, probably doesn't include information for a new developer or, um, and, and so we are looking at it from a little bit different angle than just a bad comment, I would say. Um, in general, because of the way the reviews happen, it is um, hard to find bad, bad commits really in the kernel, you're right. So I am trying to approach from a different angle that um, will the comment message um, uh, useful for um, maintaining in the long run and then also teaching um, or learning using that as a, a learning tool, if you want to learn. So any other comments? Uh, could you suggest some automatic tools uh, which would check uh, commit messages and uh, serve as a hook to decline pull request, for example, if commit messages to short. Uh... So there are, um, the Cardinal has the check patch tool that does checking on the commit logs as well. It, if you were to turn on, um, we talked about spell check, right? So, and then um, it, ta it looks at um, if your commit, so unfortunately, it won't tell you what's missing, right? So in the information, like for example, um, if we have, uh, there is one we looked at which had the commit um, information in there, like this one. So if this commit, if this does not, um, uh, this commit description isn't correct, it will tell you uh, and ch check and tell you, yeah, you didn't do this right or a fixes tag is not correctly um, uh, specified in the commit log. But it can't tell you what's missing, right? It's very, uh, we are seeing that it's subjective, uh, commit logs itself. Uh, uh, we have, uh, we looked at this commit um, it, that speaks to everybody. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, this one right here. And then this one right here that we thought, well, uh, this, this is where the subjective nature of the uh, analysis comes in. So can that be automated? Some of the things can be automated. Obviously, spell checking can be automated, right? And then also, how you, whether it fits in the format, commit log, fit, uh, when you are referencing a particular commit, does it really um, give that inf information? Before we commit um, into the kernel, uh, a, a particular patch, we check for whether the commit law, uh, log is referencing the valid commit um, that's already in the code base and fixes tag is referencing uh, the valid commit that has to be in the code base. It will reject that based on that. Um, there are a few things we do check, like for example, does the author match the signed off correctly and so on. However, there is a subjective nature of the text itself that will be hard to automate. I, so the short answer is, I can't. I don't know of any other tool than the check patch. Um, and then there is a few other things we use in the kernel development process, where it's verifying signatures, verifying fixes, and so on, um, that we look for uh, whether that fix is the uh, the SHA commit ID is already in the base, or the signed signed offs are in good state. In some situation, I saw reports that they use hooks for validating at least the format of the commit message. You know, like uh, usually in some repos, they do require to have which component did you touch in the subject line and then explain and have a, uh, the subject line. So this to be that format. Uh, so yeah, Git hooks could be one way to validate those. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know that. So, so does it um, say say that if you are um, referencing a subsystem in the subject line, but that doesn't seem to be the fix? Does it 
flag down? Is that it, it, it will reject the uh, well? I mean, in, in, in uh, for example, if you use other tools like Bitbucket and so on, you can configure so that it will reject the pull request. So you will need to fix that beforehand. Okay. And uh, you know, so yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So do you have um do you have any links on a link that you can share on the chat to for that? Uh, not unfortunately. Okay. Okay. So that that's actually good. So that that can uh, that again um more enhanced in terms of checking. Um, it goes into uh, checking and uh, uh, checking to see that uh, the the commit is uh, context of the commit. Like for example, you know your 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 commits uh, the what you're saying you're fixing is what you're actually fixing kind of thing. The, but some of the subjective stuff, um, I'm not sure. Like for example, if you uh, were to suggest recommendations on uh, this particular commit saying, hey, what can you, what more can you add? Or maybe this one right here saying, hey, uh, not that one, I'm sorry, the uh, DRM one that we were looking at earlier uh, with the how and how we thought that um, how is missing, this one right here. So that one, it's subjective, right? It's a, um, it, uh, then it would be difficult for a auto automated tool to do that, at least I don't know of any automated tools that do that. Um, so, uh -huh. Well, yes. it looks like there, um, there's a comment in the chat and I just reposted it for everyone to see, but just wanted to direct that attention to you. Okay, so that's, uh, thanks for the hint on check patch thing. Um, yes, it is a very elaborate script. It, um, it does multiple things. It will, there are multiple options. It has a spell check option too. So if you want to, to spell check your, um, uh, it's a code check, code spell check option. That means that it can even go, if you added a comment and then you made a typo in the comment, it'll check, it'll go and check for that. Um, and then in addition to that, it'll flag uh, some issues, some problems like the code itself. It, it'll validate, it'll, it'll tell you what is wrong um, in any of the code that you're doing based on the coding guidelines for Linux. So it is a very useful tool um, to, to run. Um, I do run it, it it's um, develop, develop, kernel developers use this a lot to, to, to verify your code during at each stages and then I use it when I'm committing. I, I run check patch on the, com, um, my, the patches I'm committing to the uh, kernel. For, for the spell check, I personally have my git configured so that the editor is BIM and the uh, spelling is automatically enabled when I'm writing a patch commit message. Right. Uh, so that happens already when I'm writing in, in real life. <laughs> right. Yeah. The, I do. I do the same. Uh, when you are uh, when you are committing, this is this can be very helpful when you are committing patches and then um, verifying them. One final run. Some, especially um, for me, when I am um, writing cover letters, um, I tend to use that feature when um, because cover letters uh, for a patch series they don't go into the uh, git um, into the commit. So that's another um, thing um, to look at. These cover letters is another thing that uh, we write when you are doing a patch series. Um, and then uh, when you are doing that, that cover letters are very important when, especially if you uh, have multiple patches in your series explaining what you're doing. So that aspect I haven't touched on in this. And then, um, Talking about that, one more thing is when you are sending, um, uh, this is uh, the, the, when you are sending a revision, right? You have gotten comments uh, on your version, one of the patch or two of the patch. Then you would talk about for make making things easier for reviewers. You will be uh, saying what you changed, what you addressed 
in your version one to version two, um, that information does not go into the commit log itself um, at, for the kernel, um, as per the kernel guidelines. Where it'll go, uh, some people include that, but so, uh, where it'll go is right before the diff stack. Um, if, if that information is valuable, then um, to be part of the commit log, the way you would do that is you would write it such that it's not a version one to version two, but you would say that um, it, if you consider it another design, if it's a big, big enough thing to be included in the commit log, it's not like it trivial um, fixes, um, then you would include that as a alternative or a design um, consideration or another way uh, that uh, version one fixed versus as it evolved during the reviews. So any thoughts on that one? So if you are sending kernel patch, it's something to keep that in mind where that um, revision changes, patch revision, uh, what changed between revisions. So what else? Um, I'm hearing silence. No other comments. Mm -hmm. On uh, anybody wants to share any other thoughts? Oh, well, I saw in some of the you know, for example, when you are talking only about you know a patch set that contains only one patch, mm -hmm. and in uh, some of the repositories, for example, if I remember correctly, you would repositories. It is so that they do recommend to write this information in the notes sections of a patch. Uh, which uh, means that it's it's not visible in the commit message, but it's visible, you know, in the patch itself. Just not to send a cover letter for one patch series. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, you do not need a cover letter if it's a single patch. Absolutely. If the, it is multiple patches that you are sending, um, then you would, you would talk about... Um, what the patch series are. It could be a feature that um, has a multiple um, patches uh, in a series, or it could be a, a set of fixes, for example. You might find several fixes and you want to group them together just for review purposes, not necessarily that they are dependent on each other. In general, patch series, they are dependent on each other, but not always. Sometimes somebody, some, somebody might group several fixes in a patch series so that uh, they get reviewed together. Um, so the note section that you're talking about, is that something similar to what we do in the kernel where we add um, the version changes between the, between the diff lines? Like um, um, a good example is like diff stat goes down here and then we add it right between the signed off and diff stat. They get thrown yes. away. Mm, okay. Yeah. okay. So it looks like you have a label for that in the U-boot for you, that you use? Um, no, I just yeah, if you have a link. link, just share it and then I'll show, I'll, I'll open that up. Uh, let me find okay. C1 if I have. Okay. So sounds like it's similar. We don't have a formal way. What we do is we say, uh, version one, version two, um, we do the uh, changes that uh, talk about changes since. We say changes since V1, since V2, and it could go up to several levels. Well, it's the same here. You just, you know, the format is the same. You just put it in a different place, not in the cover letter. Right, right, okay. So yes, uh, the nature of the uh, kernel patches is that since we take them, we uh, take patches, uh, we get patches on a mailing list, we came up with uh, um, certain formatting type things to communicate uh, different things. Like, you know, if you have a, if you're using a, um, another review process, um, a different kind, different review process than uh, GitHub review process or Garrett is another one that I have used, I used in the past. 
um, you could have more mechanisms to communicate the same information. So, yeah, so um, any other thoughts? I'm, you know, I, I didn't include a whole lot of uh, comments. We can look at more comments, um, but any other discussion? Uh, this is a good discussion. We're talking about path series and um, any questions you might have in general, um, any uh, kernel development in terms of patches, uh, patch process, development process that you may have that's relevant, to, that is relevant to this discussion here. Uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, as far as I know, the kernel side development mostly go through the emails or plain test emails where we send the patches. Is it still same or we have any pull request kind of things similar to GitHub or Bitbucket or it planning is, uh, to implement? Right, sorry. Yeah, it is still um, email based. Uh, okay, so it will be like continue with the email based itself, right? Correct. For, okay. for now, that's how it is. And then that's what we are using currently. Okay, okay, yeah. Thank you. And uh, one, another thing to note is even the bug reports, um, bug reports also reports as well, funnel through emails at the moment. All the Git pull requests that go from maintainers to sub-maintainers to maintainers and so on, they are also plain text. Um, okay. Yeah. So is there any, really, is there any PRs or is just a different, send it as a patch? Uh, say, that, say that again, I'm sorry, I didn't follow. Uh, okay, so in GitHub or Bitbucket where we use today, there is a PR pull request exactly as it is pull request, but here it is like more like a patch sending. So is it like really a PR or? Ah, oh uh, uh, no. What, what we what we do is we actually say um, uh, the pull request process is uh, a little more involved than sending a patch to the uh, patch, right? So what uh, we do is uh, if I am sending a pull request up, what I would do is I would do a uh, I would tag, I would sign the commit, uh, the top commit um, that I want. Uh, to be included, and then the bar, the commit from the range, right? The top one, I would tag it, and then I would sign it, then upload it to the kernel.org. Um, yeah, let, let me go and show that to you. Um, I will show. Um, I can show you the git. So we sign those. We... Um, those are signed get, uh, commits. So let's see. Uh, where is my get? I'm going to find myself because I did send a pull request recently. So um, this is what you will see. Um, this is the pull request that goes in. So, you, so I, I would sign it and then I would include, uh, this is the one that uh, uh, tells um, what is included in this uh, pull request and then um, good pull request, it will include that. So does that answer your question? These are all signed um, pull requests. Uh, yes, that, that, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, the thing is like, uh, I seen many people are telling like PR and we can hook up the things and automate, but I was confused like how really a kernel sending mails can be hooked up to an automated system. That, that, that's why I asked. So we are, we have some more tools now to uh, be for tool set that can pull um, patch bundles to apply and it will include the links, um, any links, discussion links um, and such. Um, we we are we are automating um, the some of the process um, in terms of how you could um, pull a bundle patch bundle or batch path series to apply, 
but however we are not we haven't it's still email based okay there is some automation okay. tool automation happening to make life easier for maintainers and and uh, developers in terms of um sub maintain maintainer sending a pull request and maintainers themselves pulling stuff from patchwork so patchwork if you haven't looked at patchwork um patchwork uh, it will be uh, we all of a lot of the i think patchwork.org okay let me actually it will be kernel.org um so you will see uh, different patches right so you can review no, that one the subsystem doesn't seem to uh, maybe maybe i'll go to mine again um So if you look at these patches, um, this is the patchwork project, right? So you could download, using a B4 tool, you could download bundles from here, automated command line. Um, and then you can do reviews, for example, here, if you want to do a easier way to review the patches. Oh yes, this is a good example. This one is going from, you'll see the uh, changes, right? So can you see these changes? Let me make this, do you want me to make this bigger a bit? Um, let me see. So you will see uh, this patch, this series has gone through 21. So it even uh, includes changes from V13 here all the way to um, V21. That's where we seem to be right now, the patch series version. So not all patch series go through these revisions. Um, but this is uh, this patch series is adding a lot of things. Uh, it's adding system call, ptrace hook, file system. It's doing. Uh, it is a little more involved patch series. That's why you're seeing that. So this is where this is what I was referring to, um, where the ch uh, changes, uh, like you're talking about, you boot comment about note. So this is where this is where we do the change, uh, revision information. So I think we, yeah. Uh, does that answer your question about the signed tags and pull requests? Yes, yes. Yeah, thank you. And then you will, I can show you a pull request that I would have sent. Um, I don't think I have that here, but uh, yeah. So that's that, that's how pull pull requests funnel through the to for between sub maintainers and maintainers and so on. Oh, okay. I have. Uh, thanks for the link. Let me see if I can um, open that stuff. This is. Oh, okay. Okay. So, do you want to talk to this um, now that I have it open? I believe that's you, Nander, that sent that link. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So this is the example with yeah. the. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, I was, I was just going with my daughter. Uh, <laughs> Boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is the example. Like uh, you know, I mean, you you do describe after the sign off, and after this, right. uh, the limiter. So this information will not be present basically in the commit message once this commit will be accepted, the description and testing and so on. Oh yeah. So similarly, similar to the diff I showed you, the all of that, uh, anything uh, below this line gets thrown away. Yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. won't, don't you think that this testing information is uh, relevant to the commit though? Yeah, that's another thing I forgot to mention. Uh, it's that's another information, good information to include in a commit log, which is what kind of testing was done. But yeah, so it looks like in this particular case, uh, this is a throwaway information. Uh, yeah, well, in, in this situation, 
uh, well, you can always, I mean, <laughs> there is a reason why the, you know, you will kernel use this uh, mailing list for patch, uh, for sending patches and so on, because as if I called somebody, and I guess it was uh, uh, Craig mentioned that they, uh, these are written in stone, basically. So uh -huh. you can always go back from a commit, uh, from a commit to see the in the mailing list what exactly was discussed there and so on. And exactly, it's like, I guess exactly the same thing here. So the information itself it's not necessarily lost. Uh, it's not in the commit message. And, uh, but if somebody needs to know what happened, you know, they can go back and somewhere and begin this information up. Uh, but this is exactly the information or the format which I usually use for a cover letter. Uh, and uh, in this example, since it was only one patch, I put on all, all that information in the, in the, this section of the commit. Right. Yes, yeah, this is, uh, so in the case of kernel uh, patches, so this, anything, this information gets lost. So what I usually do is when I have a testing information that is relevant um, and adds to the, uh, uh, to the review, and then also information, I usually include the testing information in there, uh, in the commit log. I, I, that's one thing I missed when I was talking about what should be included in the commit log. So some, something mm -hmm. to keep in mind, yeah. yeah. So, I, I, so when I said the supporting information, I didn't call out testing. Yeah, testing is again, another supporting information that can um, give more context to what, and then that can generate discussion. Somebody could come and say, hey, oh yeah, okay, you tested this part. Did you test this? Or could you run this test? Um, so that kind of generates a discussion um, that would be valuable um, as well. And then somebody else coming along and then fixing something in the same area, they will have a commit log to look at and say, oh, um, the previous commit tested all of these. Let me make sure I test those as well. So having this information is very useful. Thanks for sharing this link. Um, uh, this, uh, uh, this shows a different, um, I mean, what uh, you are doing and which is similar to what we do. We're just doing it in different ways, um, different format. No problem. All right. So any, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Shua. We actually just have 10 minutes left. So probably want to do a last call and then ah, I'll yes. be sure you share your, re your um, resources for everyone as well. Okay, great. Yeah, let's do that. Um, I will, um, I think I am, um, yeah, just the last uh, call for uh, one question or one or two questions and then I can show you, uh, we'll, we'll conclude it. Looks like we just have one question in the slide and the um, chat about the slides being made available. Um, go right ahead, Shua. Yes, yes, we can make the slides available. Yeah, definitely. Um, so another thing, uh, another thing we can do, Kristen, if yeah. we can share, we, if we can uh, save the chat, maybe some of the answers that are, uh, that during the discussion, we had discussion. So we yeah. can include more resources like the U-Boot resource here. Uh, that'll be another, um, you know, uh, a resource to include as well. So I can pull some um, answers and discussion as well into the slide set add one more slide with all of that, and then I, I can make the slide set available. Perfect. Okay, that's great. And just wanna remind everyone as well, this session will be, um, it's being recorded and will be posted to the Linux Foundation YouTube channel as well. So you'll be able to reference and reference it there. Um, Looks and, like I have a question here. Yeah. Uh, outside adding tests that was run during the comments as Nander did in the link you shared is there any other thing that is important um trying to think we covered um what why and how uh we talked about how it's supporting adding supporting information is important in terms of description of the bug or link to the bug or a previous commit that's being fixed or a 
uh, or a reference to a commit that added a feature that we are working on and fix this and testing information, test results. Um, in, in some cases, what I have done is when I was doing a, a, a more uh, involved feature that uh, spanned multiple subsystems and multiple drivers, I had a test plan um, that I wrote for my own sanity and then I included the link to the test plan in the commit. You have to make sure that, the, uh, of course, the limit, the commit link you are giving is a permanent link. So that's the tricky part. But um, um, I include that. Um, other than that, I cannot think of anything. But if you can think of something, just chime in. Well, in my opinion, it's always boiling down like a uh, first thing which when I'm writing a commit message, I'm starting to think who I, am I targeting, you know? So if it is, you know, the maintainer of that, uh, uh, you know, uh, domain, then of course you don't need to write it. Uh, I mean, you already know from, from the start that some of the things are already clear, right. not necessarily included. If you are expanding you know, the, your range. So it's not only the maintainer, but other people as well. So then you decide that other information it's, it's relevant or, you know, that, that can be used by somebody else who had, doesn't have so, so good background in this area that they will understand what happens. Uh, that, you know, just the rule of thumb, what, what do you check when you write a commit message? And then of course, what was mentioned here about the, uh, you know, why, how, and uh, testing. And basically in the end, all the relevant information that can be used to understand better what happened. So absolutely, that is one of the reasons I, I you know, um, uh, that's one of the reasons I thought this uh, uh, webinar would be useful. This topic is useful because sometimes we think about, hey, it makes perfect sense in my head, I'm going to write it. And it makes perfect sense to reviewers and develop, uh, maintainers you always work with because um, you know the context. Uh, however, um, another thing to think about is um, how do we make this, so you might not be maintaining this uh, five years from down the road, right? Somebody else might be maintaining this, right? Then what happens, can they understand it? Can a new, when, how do you attract new people coming in and they don't feel lost? Can you, if you, if you can give a little more information in the commit log, keep keeping others in the perspective, um, then though these commit logs uh, can serve more purpose than, um, they will serve a larger purpose than uh, just communicating the change. So I, I think you described it very well. Um, and then. That's, that's one of the reasons I picked this topic as a topic to talk about. All right, so um, with that, um, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, and I, I hope that this is helpful to you and at, at least you'll understand, uh, you'll get some context on what maintainers and reviewers look for. And then also um, what would be helpful, what's in, what would be helpful for you in the long run, even if you have to go and fix and maintain that area. Um, in addition to that, um, I'll leave you with the resources, additional resources. And we have LF um, at Linux Foundation, we have mentoring programs designed to help new developers with necessary skills and resources to experiment and learn, contribute effectively. And we have been, um, um, we have several projects currently. Um, we have uh, 88 projects active right now and 129 or 130 mentees are going through learning actively right now. And then in addition to that, Outreach is, um, has been remote internship program uh, that is run. Um, and it, uh, Outreach supports diversity in open source. And then they span several um, uh, projects, several open source projects, Cardinal, um, the, the, uh, uh, some of the, um, they, they, they span, I'm sorry, I'm not, I, I cannot think of all the projects they support, they support lots of different projects. And then they have internship programs as well. And then uh, Linux Foundation training, I have gave a link here. We have uh, free courses and webinars 
tutorials for self-learning and also events. We are doing things like this. We are bringing uh, webinars like this one and the uh, Linux Foundation events are always a great resource for learning. And we are focusing on structured and unstructured uh, learning. And this is part of our unstructured um, uh, learning in addition to the structured programs like um, LF mentoring, OutBT, uh, pro, uh, that is also a, a structured um, free pro program. And then please make use of all of these resources for self-study. And I hope these will, this uh, webinar has been helpful. And thank you for attending. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Sure. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. See you in Dublin next year. Yes, we'll see you there. <laughs>